All right, your next speaker, this one is going to be delicious. You have Justin LeBeau. Justin is an award-winning chef and owner of Model Milk Restaurant, and he's also the Vice President of Operations of the Concord Group, where he oversees the kitchens and maze at Double Zero, Clive Burger, and The National. Please welcome Justin. Yes, Uh, let's call this the trouble with toast, uh, look at global food trends. <clears throat> 28 years ago, I started a culinary journey that has taken me through uh, nine cities, five countries, on three different continents. I've immersed myself in food trends for the last 28 years, the ebb and flow, the coming and going, um, <clears throat> and I have a suspicion about them. They don't really mean a lot. Uh, <laughs> at least that's, that was my opinion. They seem to be randomly generated lists of some common sense items, some um, ridiculous items, some items with no rhyme or reason to why they're on it, and the rest of us are just supposed to eat them up. In the industry, we kind of like have a disdain or a healthy sense of humor about them. Uh, two months ago, Honoru contacted me and asked me about a, the latest food craze in San Francisco. Had I heard of it, and what I, was I doing anything with it? Toast. Do you use toast at Model Milk? I thought it was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever heard, so I just dismissed it out of hand and didn't give it another thought for the next two months. Um, <coughs> This was, a, this was a text I got the other night when I mistakenly served what apparently is a really trendy fruit to a chef friend of mine from Montreal who was in town for the weekend. Uh, this goes on all the time. When, it, when an ingredient becomes a little too popular, people will tend to um, call you out for using it. There's nothing wrong with persimmons per se, um, but they are, uh, they've become the embodiment of a really negative food trend that I think that's affecting and hurting restaurants and, and, and culinary teams everywhere, and that's Instagramming food. It's more important now for a chef to be able to Instagram a hot looking plate than it is to actually cook it. It doesn't matter whether the food gets to the guest hot, whether it tastes good, all that matters is whether they had enough time to plate it up and shoot the picture. Everybody knows kale. I've eaten my weight in kale salads in the last five years. But how did kale become a food trend? Where did it come from? The answer is, is we've all been had. The American Kale Association paid a boatload of money to this woman in New York. We'll wait for it, because I'm early, apparently. Um, <laughs> Named Oberon Sinclair. Oberon took their, their vegetable and peddled it to their, her high profile clients, uh, chefs and restaurateurs in New York. And what happened next was the rest of us couldn't wait to get on board. As soon as it showed up on somebody's menu, it showed up on everybody's menu. So, the long and the short is that we got had on that one, but it is delicious. <laughs> This is perhaps the best restaurant in the world. Uh, I was fortunate enough to spend a month in Copenhagen in September. Uh, I got to spend some time in the kitchens of, no of Noma. It is the single most influential restaurant on the planet right now. Uh, about nine years ago, it pioneered what became known as New Nordic Cuisine, um, which is something that has had an effect on the food that everybody does. Pictured here is the chef Rene Redzepi, and what it was was basically a hybrid of uh, foraging for wild ingredients paired with um, for lack of a better word, just some classic Scandinavian culinary sensibilities. Um, easily the most influential chef of the, next, of the last six years and probably the next six. Um, but that brings us back to toast and the problem with toast. <laughs> How is this a food trend and why? Uh, recently I, I, I went to San Francisco with the owners of Ox and Angela and Una uh, because it was one of their birthdays. And the idea was just to go down and eat in some of the best restaurants in San Francisco and see what was going on. Um, the first night we were there, I was reminded about the phone call from En Route and the ridiculousness of it. So you're sitting in one of the best food cities on the planet and you're discussing in, in a fantastic restaurant the ridiculous notion of toast. Five dollar slices of toast in coffee shops. It just, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to us. Um, what did they mean by toast? Were they talking about French toast? Toast and jam, like toast and butter, uh, crostinis, bruschetta. Nobody really seemed to know what was going on and we hadn't seen any toast yet, so I was highly suspect of it. <laughs> the next night, we went to dinner and uh, we were joined by a friend of mine who's a San Francisco-based uh, photographer, does food photography and, and all sorts of photography. Um, she had actually shot toast. Uh, <laughs> her name is Alana Hale, and uh, when it came to the subject of toast, she got really serious and a little bit intense, and it kind of freaked me out. She told us the story of uh, <clears throat> this woman who suffered from mental illness and opened a coffee shop called Trouble in uh, 
China Beach, just a little neighborhood of, in San Francisco. And uh, apparently, she, this woman was credited as the epicenter of the birth of toast as a food trend. Uh, it was enough to pique some curiosity in me. So I went home, and, and we had talked about maybe this being the presentation that I was going to do tonight. So here it is. Um, so I went home, and I started to Google what, what I thought I, would, I should Google to find toast as a food trend. I just simply typed in toast as a food trend. Um, <clears throat> what came up on the first page of the Google search was literally six or seven different versions of the word trend, uh, the word food craze. But really what you want is this the second one, a Toast Story Pacific Standard magazine. Uh, they printed this story about this woman um, who is in her mid-30s, who is just diagnosed with a schizoaffective disorder. Uh, she's bounced around from job to job, city to city for her whole life. Her name is Julieta uh, Corelli. Um, Trouble Coffee has changed her life. It's given her the anchor that she needed. She will never have like lasting, long-term, big human relationships that we take for granted. What she does have because of Trouble Coffee and Toast is she has five 10-minute, uh, 15-minute, 20-minute relationships with the same people every day. Trouble Coffee has become a community hub uh, in China Beach. Um, if you ask anybody in San Francisco, they will tell you that Trouble Coffee was the birthplace of Toast as a food trend. And it's simply her grasping at the stability that most of us take for granted. Um, so while we poked fun at it for a while, I felt a little ridiculous and a little ashamed afterwards because this woman literally is her motto is she sells three things, toast, coffee, and young coconuts. Uh, her motto is that she's building her own damn house. After 20 years of being bounced around on the streets, addicted to drugs, she now has a place that she calls home. And it's a little bit, it's not for me to say or anybody else to say that toast shouldn't or shouldn't be a food trend. It just sort of happened. Um, why toast? I think just because it's simple, because it's common, uh, because it's nostalgic, because it's something everybody can relate to, because it's satisfying. Um, to bring it back full circle, this next slide came out of the Calgary Herald last year. Um, toast as a food trend. We have a saying in the kitchen at Model Milk, and that is that you can't teach toast. But as I walked through this sort of heartbreak come food trend, I realized that you can learn a thing or two from it. Thank you.